Panel discussion, we're going to be talking about voter apathy. Voter apathy. What do you understand voter apathy to be? Simply, it's a lack of concern in this context when it comes to voting. Why do people not choose to vote? And we're going to be dwelling on the challenges and some of the possible solutions to voter apathy. I would allow my guests to introduce themselves because they can introduce themselves better than I could ever do. So, on my right we have... Uh, Alaji Gay. My name is uh, Alaji Gay. Uh, I'm a software engineer by profession. So, uh, uh, I'm here to have this question with this uh, panel members on what are the white people don't want to vote and what are the solutions uh, to that. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. Welcome to Bolentai's the Democracy Panel Discussion on Voter Apathy. And on my left, we have... Modu Boy of um, Nema Sukuta. I'm from Nema Sukuta. And then I'll be representing the Association of Gambia Albinians. The Association of Gambia Albinians. Yes. Welcome, Modu Boy, to Bolentai's the Democracy you Panel are. Discussion. And on my far left, we have... I'm Ajaka Desanyan a journalist here in the Gambia from Sahel Network TV. I will work as a news editor. News editor. I'm glad to be here. You're very welcome. Okay, let's get right into it. Voter apathy. Is there any justifiable reason for a registered voter who is in good health not to turn up to vote? I'm going to stand with, start with the lady. Is there any reason for someone who is of good health and above 18, or 18 and above? not to vote. What do you think are the reasons why voter apathy is common in your own perspective, in your own understanding? Well, I don't think it's right in any way for someone to decide not to vote because um, voting is actually one of the things that make a good citizen. And as a good citizen, I believe you have to be patriotic as well and do things that are supposed to be done. Since voting is once in every five years, I don't think there's any reason that could stop someone from voting if you're healthy, you're strong, and you have nothing to do. Especially when we say voters' day. Voters', voters day, elections day, people are not going to work. So I believe um, voting is not something that people should shy away from. But then in most cases, the reason why people do not vote um, only has to do with lack of understanding of how things work. Because um, most of the time, the discussion I hear people say is, how does my one vote count? Why should I vote? Um, me alone voting doesn't change um, a leader or doesn't bring in a new president. So voting or not, things are going to be the same. This is something that I hear all the time and it's really general. When we come to be the young people especially, we have that problem of, I'm one person, why should I vote? So I believe this is um, one of the main reasons why people really tend to sit back when it's time to vote. Mr. Elagige, yes. we come to you now. I'm going to put on the table, put down on the table some of the reasons why, because she put down a reason why people practice voter apathy, why people do not vote. I also hear people say, she said, does my vote count? I hear people say there hasn't been a lack of any changes since people have started voting until now. What do you have to say about that? Yes, when they say, uh there have not been any change because they have been voting for the past decades and nothing works. In fact, in some cases, the country is not even just stagnant. If it was just stagnant, uh, people will uh, say, okay, there is hope, there may be hope, but it's going backward. Mm -hmm. So if, if you have been voting for so many years, election upon election, and these politicians are campaigning, making a lot of promises, and when they come into power, you don't see them act on those promises. You start to lose hope. Yeah, they are right uh, in the sense that uh, those that don't want to go, they are right in the sense that yes, these people have been failing us. Interesting. Yes. So do you think mm -hmm. the lack of change 
is because people do not vote for the right person and if so what kind of voter education do you feel let's let's focus on the challenge first before we go uh, to the solutions do you think it's because people do not vote for the right person yes but also it's very difficult to know who, who the, the right, right person, person is right. because they will all tell you what you want to hear. In fact, the president, the current president himself, said on live TV that when you are on a campaign trail, you can say whatever you want just to get the votes. And once you are in power, you do what you want. So when you hear statements like that, it starts to discourage you. But so that's failure to honor campaign promises. Exactly. But with all that, you have to keep voting because one day, Someone that make those promises will honor them because not everyone is the same. Though our politicians have been failing us, but at some point we may have the right one if you vote. If you don't vote, you are surrendering your right to another person to make the decision for you. And we have to understand something. Uh, if you don't vote because you don't have hope in these politicians, you're not only giving up on those politicians, you're giving up on your country, you're giving up on your children, on your grandchildren, on everything. Because uh, these people, when they come into power, because if you don't vote, someone is going to make the decision for, for you. you. Yes. So if you surrender that right and somebody else mm -hmm. make the decision and they elect the wrong person, uh, that, pa uh, that, 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 that politician or the president himself, once he comes to power, he will do whatever he wants. And his decisions may affect you and your future generations for decades or centuries to come. Absolutely. Because the decisions they make today, they can impact, uh, they can have an impact for so many years. Absolutely. As someone who um, has created an application for facilitating voting online, um, I want to ask you this before I move on to our gentleman here, Mr. Uh, Modibo. Let's talk about religious beliefs. I feel voter apathy, religious beliefs, is also a reason why certain people do not vote. Because maybe one of the candidates, or a majority of the candidates, are of a particular religion, and they feel like their own religion is not represented right. You understand what I'm trying to say? What do you have to say about that as a challenge? Uh, when it comes to religion, in other countries, I think uh, it's an issue. Right. But in Gambia here, I don't think it's that of a big issue. The the bigger challenge here comes uh, is in tribe, ethnicity. Ethnicity. Ethnicity, yes. Right. But when it comes to religion, I think Gambia, we really harmonize very well. Do you Muslims feel, as a challenge, do you feel any other religion apart from Islam, let's talk about the hard facts, yes. can actually be, let's just look at presidential elections, for example. Yes. Do you feel anybody apart from one who is in Islam can actually be president in this country? Well, in my own opinion, I don't mind that. You wouldn't mind that as a I wouldn't mind that. And in fact, most people uh, on the electorates that I uh, speak to, they, they never made mention about religious issues being uh, a concern to them. Determined yeah. to voting. So really, uh, it, it's, some of them, uh, they are more concerned about the ethnicity or the region that a uh, candidate comes from. Uh, all these, they are really not important. What's really important is who can move this country forward. Because if uh, a particular candidate comes from my religion, or we are uh, in the same tribe, how does that solve my problem? If I cannot provide food for my family, mm. the lives of my lost ones are not safe. They are not in good hands. So it could be when they it's fall sick, uploading. when they fall sick, they don't have good medical care. Not, it's not like you go to the so hospital you, you and say, oh, I'm Christian, uh -huh. so, or I'm Muslim, or exactly. I'm Buddha, whatever, or you, I'm Mandinka, I'm Jola, so preferences on all of that. It doesn't really matter. Exactly. You don't get a discount in the supermarket yeah. because yeah. of your ethnicity yeah. or your religion. Yeah. You know? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, um, and we're going to come into what your app does and how you feel your app can create a step forward into getting more people to vote and into reducing voter apathy. Mr. Motobo, yeah. one of the possible reasons for voter apathy is the distance between where people live sometimes and where the voting polls are. Mm. In the context of people with disabilities, for example, or people who feel segregated, people who don't want to step out 
and join where a lot of people are voting because they feel different. They feel that if they appear in public, they are looked down upon, they're not really considered. So altogether, they just neglect or just forget the whole voting process. What do you feel about that? What do you have to say about that? Um, actually, um, uh, persons with disability in general, during elections, they face um, a lot of problems, of which includes um, transportation, like the day of voting, they find it very difficult to have transport um, to the polling stations because of either um, it's, there's a transport problem for, for those using wheelchair more especially because um, for those using crutches they can walk on their own or try but they are level best but also they find it very difficult actually because um, Sometimes during the police stations, when you go to vote, um, you find it very difficult, like you might even touch someone, they will push you or they will be telling you, um, you are doing this to me. More experienced persons with albinism, mm -hmm. if you um, get to touch, um, in touch with them, they will be pushing you or they will be running away from you. And then you yourself will realize that these people, they are discriminating you. That's segregated. Yes. So, so basically, when we come to the solutions, we're also going to focus on, because we can't, we're, we're all Gambians, yeah. irrespective of your tribe, like we mentioned, irrespective of religion, irrespective of a person with disability, understand? And if we have to separate, like he said, you go to certain places and they're like, oh, don't touch me. Yes. Oh, you know, mm -hmm. oh, don't touch me. You're this and that. You understand? You're a person with a uh, handicap. You understand what I'm trying to say? Then we might as well separate tribes to go and vote in one side, you understand? Religion to go and vote if you all Muslims vote here, all Christians vote here, if we're gonna have to segregate, which is which is which is not right. No, you understand no, what I'm trying to say? It's not which right. is not right at yes. all. You mentioned that sometimes in your experience, people actually do tell you do not touch me. Yes. Wow, what ignorance. How do you how do you share with us your experience? Actually Years back, when I was so young, um, I was once a student, mm. law basic, and then mm. I did my law basics at um, the provinces, mm. Joven Law Basic School. And there, mm. um, during that time, teachers were not that much um, educated, or uh, sorry to say that, teachers were not that much sensitized on um, how to take care of persons with special needs, special needs children. So you find it very difficult to cope with the classroom situations. More especially, they don't understand that persons with albinism can't sit at the back of the classroom. Sometimes, teacher will be telling you, why are you not writing? Or they'll be even beating you because of you are not writing. So they don't understand your situation. So that's one experience that I got and then, when I got to the, my upper basic school, I had a friend who will be um, helping me because um, during class, I, I, I lost a lot because I have to wait for my friend when he or she is done writing and then I ask, uh, I borrowed her, um, he would borrow me um, his book and then I take it home mm. and then write. So that's actually a problem that I also faced when I was going to school. So, so then in this context, people with disabilities or let's say someone who, has, who is an albino, you feel like you're not represented in, in, in the government. You're not represented. Your case is not represented. Very well. Do, do, do you, okay, let's say right now, do you feel like this? Is there anybody that is representing your case? Are there groups of people that are representing your case and are they doing a good job? Yes, actually, um, we have an association, that's the Association of Gambia Albinos, and then we are trying our level best to ensuring that persons with albinism live a normal life as any other person. What do you think about an albino being a part of the National Assembly, for example? Yes, that's really important, and then some days will represent ourselves in the National Assembly and even in um, presidential elections because we have seen in other countries like um, Rwanda 
the upcoming elections, they have six persons with albinisms who are ready to take part in um, presidential and then the local, local government council. elections. And is yes. there any albino in any of, that you know of, in any of the local council elections? Um, in local council um, governments, sorry? No, actually, uh, we have, um, in the National Assembly, we have a person there, um, Jibairul Jane, but he's acting as um, the Director of Communications. Mm -hmm. Yes. What are some of the challenges you feel that Albinos are faced with in, when it comes to participating to be a part of the local government, for example? Okay. Actually, um, we have problems because we have seen in other countries, um, when election is approaching, the, that's the greatest risk for albinos in those countries because they, are, they had the belief that getting their body parts might be a good luck charm for the, for the chance of winning elections. So that's why we also had the fear of taking part well, in yeah. elections. Yes. And then uh, currently we are also so much worried because we have seen people who are dying like a seed and then nothing is done about it and election is approaching. Those black people who are dying or those young people dying, then we had to believe that we also, we had to be very much worried about ourselves. Yes. Because it's nothing is done about those kind of killings and then we are so much worried about that. So, and have you experienced, because obviously you said there are instances where people go, don't touch me. Do you know any instances where tension and violence is exerted against albinos? Yes, violence, more especially ladies, because... Um, more especially ladies? Yes. Female albinos? Yes, female albinos. Because in other countries, they had to believe, like, um, having affairs with female with al um, albinism might um, kill HIV AIDS. Do you think in Gambia here, they share some of those same beliefs? Actually, in the Gambia, it's a different case. Okay. What do yes. you think the case is for in Gambia? Um, the case here in the Gambia here is because um, we are so much concerned with our religious, and then we respect our religious as well. So, okay. yeah. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Wow. Um, I, I'm going to come back to you real quick. Um, Kadi, question. So we've mentioned... Um, lack of change, failure to honor campaign promises, religious beliefs, distance to polling stations, no preferred candidates, um, tension and violence during elections. This is just some of the things that we're touching upon. Uh, I, one of the last things I want to touch upon here before I open this up a little bit more and you give me a little bit more about what you feel really creates voter apathy. I want to talk about no preferred candidate. I came across this um, information uh, just the other day. There should be a, how would I call it? There should be a no voter selected tick box. You understand? Or nobody tick box when it comes to voting. Because in, like in his, in his case, some people feel like no one is representing their cause, so they're not going to vote for anybody. You understand? So it's important that the people who vote for nobody also be counted. You understand? So we know overall who feels like there are not enough people representing their cause. In cases of persons with disabilities, in the case of albinos, and, and religious beliefs, whatever the case may be. You understand what I'm trying to say? Okay, um, as someone who presents a program with balloting and, and voting and everything, this is what I want to ask you. When it comes to this no preferred candidate, what do you feel? What's your take on this? Well, I think um, it's a very simple but complicated issue. And I would blame people not knowing actually um, about their candidates. Okay. Because um, we have various candidates in every election. And maybe you know about the famous one, but you do not know about the one that's a bit um, quiet or the one that has not been to your area. Even though they come, maybe you were not there to listen or you did not have access to the manifesto. So I believe when people or these um, political party leaders or candidates um, come down to the level of the people to explain to them what plans they've got, to do, um, got for them, 
how we can improve as a country and how they want to help out um, in cases like this. I think people will be ready to vote because that also counts. Not knowing someone's agenda or what they're talking about throughout the, um, the political season is something that will contribute to some things like that. Because if I do not know about you, I wouldn't know what and what and what you brought to the table. I will only hear about the famous one whom I've heard of what he has, but it doesn't impress me. Maybe there's someone out there you're yet to learn about. I think if we know more about um, the candidates we have yearly or during every election, um, people would be willing to vote without even saying, I do not have anyone to vote for. Because I believe that um, out of the people out there who, or out of the candidates um, out there, there must be one whom you would um, come into understanding terms with or to say, well, I see myself here. Okay, um, initially when I um, asked you is there any uh, justifiable reason for a registered voter who is in good health not to turn up and vote, um, I would like to, I'd like to add something to, to, to that. I'd like to go back to that real quick and um, mention campaigns. Um, I want to ask you from your experience um, with voting, presenting a show that deals with voting and ballot boxes and, and everything, how do you feel campaigns play a role in disseminating the correct information about a candidate because you know people say i would not vote because politics is politics you have fendler you understand what i'm trying to say they don't say the truth in their campaigns right what's your what's your take on that well i think if campaigns are genuine they would really play a very a very important role but how do how do how, how do you feel people should see whether this campaign is genuine and this campaign is not. The reason it will be difficult for people to see that is because um, when people are voting or the candidates are voted into office, they fail to follow or fail to bring back to the people. So they should learn by example. Way. Yeah. If at all there's one who really acted upon what he said when he was campaigning, people would then look into these campaigns. You, you know what I don't understand though, is why people sometimes, why the, the voter, we fall for the same trap. Because you know, sometimes, let's say, look at presidential elections. The, the, yes, for, in Gambia's case, we've been in a dictatorship for quite a long time. And now we're moving into um, democracy. We're in democracy and we governments now know what they want or they're figuring out what they want and the whole consciousness of the electoral process is changing, you understand? But it's been an African dilemma that people always fall for the lies of politicians, you understand? And at the end of the day, if from your experience as well, with dealing with ballot boxes and, 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 and you know presenting shows that deal with voting, what kind of education do you think can be given to the people understand, to help them see when a campaign is being truthful and when a campaign is, is not being truthful? Well, um, I think this is where the media has a role to play. The media? Yes. Okay. Because bringing in people who are experts in things like this to talk about them, um, talk about it in local languages okay. or our own national languages that we all speak and understand. I get someone on the Ballot Power Show, for example, to talk about how to choose a proper leader. Yeah. And this person comes and explains everything, tells us how we have to be careful of this, do not vote because of tribe, yeah. um, do not vote because of religion, do not do this, do not do that. We have the do's and the don'ts understood by every per person out there who's supposed to participate or vote during elections. I think things like that would really um, reduce because politicians we all know are very smart. They come in different ways. If I come this way this year, they didn't work. So you feel one of way. the challenges that we're discussing challenges here is that the media does not do enough to properly disseminate the right information when it comes to campaigns. Well, close to that. Although the media is trying. I mean, the media I is biased, not biased. Do you feel like some media houses or are biased, for example, okay. towards a particular when campaign, a particular political party? And should media houses be biased? Media houses should not be biased. Right. Um, but then one thing about us is that we only sensitize people about elections when it's time to vote. 
okay. few months to vote in. Right. And the people I find biased, I wouldn't point at a media. That's house. a very important point. We only sensitize people when the elections are getting close. close. Yeah. So if the media houses played an important role in sensitizing people throughout the year, I think people would be more prepared yes. to understand. And there would be a better understanding of how to really choose the electoral process. Um, a leader. And then I do not find uh, media houses being biased. I wouldn't point at one because I've not seen it yet okay. um, from the little experience I gathered. But I do find some journalists being biased. Bias. Do you think media houses term it important when it's not elections to you know, educate people about elections somewhere in the middle of three years into elections mm -hmm. and continue maybe in that path for a whole year? Do you think they find it, it, it con the content relevant in that period of time? Um, I believe Gambians like talking about politics. Okay. Call in shows where they can call in and actually give their opinion on what government is doing and things like that um, is really a good way to actually communicate to them about things that they should look out for when it's time to vote. Okay. So, we letting the media house letting people know about these things, I think that is where the journalist role comes to play. Okay. If you as the journalist or as the presenter have in mind that um, my role is to educate and entertain at the same time, you would come up with this idea to your editor or whosoever is in charge of the programs. And you tell them that this is about um, voter education and to sensitize my people on how to behave, how to act, how to vote, and things like that, on anything regarding elections, I believe the media houses will welcome this, because all of us are looking for content and views, and then, I mean, if you're talking about what interests the people, people. obviously they're going so to So the, the people are actually interested in politics, yeah. so we should use this to also educate them more about politics, yeah. not just speak about, you know, the hype of politics, yeah, the bad side of politics. Issues, yeah. we did this, we accomplished this. Yeah. Yes, we accomplished it, but how are we going to become better next election? Exactly. How are we going to behave properly next election? How are we going to get the people to go out and vote? How are we going to become better next election? Hold that thought. So this we're gonna before you come in, I want to ask something on the, yeah. what you just asked. Yeah. Like, uh, why do people fall for the lies and deceptions of, of the campaigns? Yeah. Over and over again. Yes. Uh, generally, people want it easy. Yeah. If you promise them heaven on earth, yeah. they will just buy it. Again and again. Yeah, and you can see it on our young ones, mm -hmm. the youths. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, to work for one month and get paid is very hard. Mm -hmm. What you're gonna earn is not much, mm. so it will. You will rather go to these betting agents, mm. and then just guess which football team is gonna win against mm. who. Mm. And if you get it right, mm. uh, you will be paid something that someone who works for two months or three months mm. will not really earn. Mm. So because of these things, mm. like people want to get easy, mm. politicians will just tell you music on your ears. Yeah. Yeah, and, I, and they will buy it. Which is but, very true. but 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 uh, if you are someone who reason, mm -hmm. you can know whether this what they are saying is is, is uh, applicable or not, or mm -hmm. something that they can achieve. Absolutely. Because uh, you have to tell people not just uh, what you want to achieve, but how are you going to achieve, achieve it? At the time because right. as the president, you are like the manager of the country's resources. Mm -hmm. So there are things that you will promise that even your budget cannot support. Absolutely. So if you look into those minor details or tiny details, you will know whether this person is telling the truth or not. Mm. And also, people, uh, they, they, they want immediate success, long uh, short-term success mm. rather than long-term success. success. Mm. So there are reforms that needs to be made. Mm. But uh, the president, if you want to... Uh, and who do you think this, 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 these reforms are going to be made by who? These reforms, they are going to be made by the president because he's the one who proposed uh, these policies. But do you think pres presidents are willing to make those reforms? Yes. It's not in their favor. Short term is reforms, it? they are willing. Mm -hmm. But long term reforms, reform. because election in Gambia is every five years. But so if you want to make reforms that will have an impact in the next 20 years, uh, you will not be rewarded by the uh, I think electorate. that people can call for those reforms yes, but and actually get these reforms voted into but power. But sometimes that is not in the interest of the politician because mm. it's long term. Mm. The, the, the president will not live, may not even live to witness mm. 
those uh, achievements. And talking but it's about on the right track. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Yeah, that's the right thing to do. Absolutely. But they just don't want and to talking do about it. the challenges um, when it comes to voter apathy, why people develop voter apathy as well, is um, there are instances where we're talking about campaigns and you know people falling for the lies of campaigns. I, I, I see that during uh, election, uh, closing up to elections, a lot of political candidates or people who are into the bodies, they, you know, gear up the activities, mm -hmm. you know. Good, they become good Samaritans, they do more jobs yeah. into, you know, more goodwill kind of stuff. And then people also fall for that. Good, yeah. You understand? Yeah. And people actually vote for them because in that three month period, mm -hmm. gearing to elections, oh, this person is so good. Yeah. He came to my village, mm -hmm. gave me this and this and this built a little road for us, did it, you know what I'm trying to say? And I feel like um, with CSOs and um, like you mentioned, the media houses, we need to educate the people that it's not what they do gearing up to the election. Exactly. You understand? Yeah. It should be the reason why you should vote for them. Because if they do so and these politicians disappoint them, what happens later is they wouldn't want to come and no. vote again. Right away. You understand? They wouldn't want to come and vote again, mm -hmm. you know? or they just feel like, ah, they're going to lie anyways, so we might as well just vote anyhow. You understand what I'm trying to say? Okay, um, with that note, we are going to come and discuss some of the solutions with um, voter apathy, towards voter apathy, and talk about your app, talk about your ballot show, and I have a special question for Mr. Motorball when it comes to possible solutions. Oh.